Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, a friend of mine, well, actually, uh, my girlfriend has like this mannequin in the house and Wow, okay. she puts different outfits on it sometimes. And when you when I walk by, I'm like, whoa, like I'm going to fucking throw that thing outside. <laughs> keep scaring me, you know what I mean? Do you do you remember that movie Mannequin <laughs> back in the eighties? You know, oh, the the but that but that was a good movie. That that was was a a good movie. The girl from Sex and the City was in it. I can't think of her name. I can't remember her name either, but she was really hot back then. She's super hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She aged well. Yeah, she did. Well, I'm talking about back then. Well, you know, she's she's Hey, good <laughs> man, now. you know me. Good now. <laughs> Dude, uh, Dino, man, thank you for uh for doing the the interview, man. This is this is awesome, man. I uh I've grown up being a Fear Factory fan, so this really means a lot to me. Nice, man. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's uh, nice to hear. Um, Yeah, dude. you know, he's, somebody had recently asked me about how I feel about, you know, like a lot of fans coming up to me and like saying that they, you know, like our music has helped them in some ways, you know, whether they were going through a bad time or, or, or good times, you know, when they were going through high school, you know, we were the soundtrack to their high school years and things like that. It's always a, it's always an honor to hear that stuff, you know? Yeah, man, you guys were before streaming, you know, I mean, you, you guys were around when we only knew you were coming to town because we had, I, I live, I'm from Atlanta, so we had a magazine called Creative Loafing. And so the back of Creative Loafing, that would show all the bands that are coming to the Masquerade, the Tabernacle, you know, and uh, that's how we knew you guys were coming to the Masquerade or wherever you'd play. And Yeah. it, it kind of, I'm still friends with all those guys, so it kind of, it, it's very special to us, you know what I mean? Yeah, the masquerade was our home, man. We played there so many times. I believe we're playing there coming up, honestly. You are. Yeah, so. Yeah, speaking of, that's your first, I, is that your first night of the tour? Is Atlanta? I have that No, in my notes. it's our first night of the Lacuna Coil tour. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're only doing, uh, you know, like 10 shows with Lacuna Coil. We're doing like five of our own headlining uh, shows to get to that tour. Um, you know, obviously our singer, we, we have a, well, uh, we'll kind of get into this for a second. Our new singer is Italian and he hung out with some of the members of Lacuna Coil recently, right? And Right. so have I. Um, and next thing you know, they're saying, hey, you want to come out on tour with us? And we're like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> So it's kind yeah, of like, that, that's in cool. some ways, yeah, in some ways, it's kind of like that easy. You know, it's like, hey, you want to go on the road? Let's do, let's do some shows together. Yeah, like, sure, let's do it. So I've never listened to Lacuna Coil. I've definitely got to check them out. I mean, I've never, I've never even heard of them really. To be honest with you, I know Lines at the Gate, which I'm super Yeah. stoked to see. Yep. Yeah. But They're, how did how'd you guys get them? um, well, I mean, you know, I've known Christian for many years, uh, and I've known uh, Diego. He's he's uh, also one of the guitar players. Um, I believe, and and Aru, of course, you know, Aru Aru's is the man, and Diego's yeah, the man. All the I love all those guys. yeah, he's been El Nino and he's been a machine head. So I know those guys for a long time, and they're obviously uh pretty much considered an LA band now, and uh, they've done some shows with us here locally. as well. So I've known him for a while. And when the Kunu coil had asked us to um, do some shows with them. Uh, and I noticed that lions at the gate were on the bill too. So I said, Hey, why don't we team up and do some dates before we get to Atlanta for the first show of the Kuna coil tour. So we're basically starting October 7th in Arizona, going to Albuquerque, El Paso, and just, making our way to Atlanta to start the tour with look at a coil. I can't, I mean, that's, 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 I can't wait. That, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I love lines of the gate guys. Cause I just had Diego on last week. So Nice. <laughs> I've had Christian, Yeah. all those guys, man, that, that, that I means think the I, world. I, I think I've seen a little bit of your interview with Diego. Yeah. Yeah. He's a super cool guy. Uh, Great. and I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys in Atlanta. Um, but, uh, So what what how long is this tour going on? This is going to be just for October. Yeah, well, see, it 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 actually, we start off a few of our own headlining shows, then we link up with the Kuna Coil for t for ten shows, and we actually had to leave the tour early because we're flying over to Europe and we start another two month tour in Europe, uh, in at the end of October, and uh, Who we are you each playing with in in Europe? yeah we teamed up with Butcher Babies, their support band, Yeah, yeah. and that starts October. 
27th at Nottingham in Nottingham Rock City. And then we just do all the UK, Ireland, uh, Scotland. And then we jump, uh, we, we get the ferry over to France and uh, we start, you know, we got like, I don't know, six or seven shows in France. And then, you know, you name it, Germany, uh, you know, Belgium, uh, Vienna, you know, Austria, uh, going into uh, Sweden, Finland, Spain, you know, all those countries. That's insane. Like what kind of like your tour manager must be fully busy right now. Like 100%. Have you used the same guy for a while, or is this a, a new person that helps well, we you kind somebody, of manage? We have so many different here, and then we have so many different in Europe. How do you do it with your equipment? I mean, do you have your own stuff down there? I mean, are you are you traveling with your guitar? You know, <laughs> of course, I got to travel with my guitar, man. It's my, guitar. <laughs> it's my babies, of course. Right. <laughs> I'd be doing that. You're not you going know, to I'm, some local place and and renting a. <laughs> you know. We we've had to do that. We've had to like borrow you know, local bands gears, because sometimes, you know, like the airline will lose your guitars or your amps. I don't even want to talk about it. Cause I don't want, I don't want to imagine. Yeah, Don't put it out in the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but we've had to do that before. Anyways. Um, yeah, we, we, we take all our, we've condensed everything else, you know, into smaller road cases. Cause when you're touring the States, we have bigger road cases, you know, it's, we don't got to travel anywhere. We don't got any flights, but Going over Europe, we put everything, we condense everything in smaller cases. And then there are times we have shipped stuff over there. Um, and there are times we just take stuff on the plane. Do you love traveling like that overseas? I mean, being on the road, is it hard or is it fun or it just kind of get used to it? It's both. It's it's It can be hard at some times, you know, because sometimes you don't get enough sleep. You know, it's like you got to go from country to country on a flight. So it's like you play a show. Next, you got to be you got to be at the airport like six, seven in the morning, catch a flight, get there like 10 or 11 in the afternoon, go to the hotel, take a nap, wake up a couple hours later or sometimes a little more and go right back and do another show. And just got to keep going and going and going. That's so insane, it's like, dude. So, yeah, it's a lack of sleep. But at the same time, it's extremely fun because you're in a different country. Sometimes you want to go walk around and see what's try different foods, meet, you know, meet different people and just uh Go out, the, go out there and experience the culture a little bit. You know what I mean? For the little time that you have. And then you go and play the show. And it's, you know, it's crazy to see, you know, all the different cultures and different languages. And, you know, obviously, you know, music is, music is a universal language, obviously. And and it's good to, to just to talk to those fans and to see their experiences and the stuff they went through, you know? Yeah, so I guess you do like meet and greets overseas. That's so cool, man. Just it's got to be amazing. Yeah, what we've, been, what we've been doing lately is we've been doing, we've actually uh, stopped the meet and greets, like the paid meet and greets. Mm -hmm. What we've been doing is just after the show, we yep. just go, we go go to the merch table, and anybody who buys uh, FF merch will sign and take photos and stuff like that. Yeah, then that's awesome. I, I actually saw Lions at the Gate do that recently, man. That's a great idea. Yeah, that yeah, it, also, events. it also draws more people to the merch table, and it's like a, it's kind of you know, a, a universal area for everybody to congregate and get to meet their favorite, you know, uh, artist. In it's a win-win because I mean, you're like, yeah. hey, don't pay us to meet you. We're gonna meet you anyway. You know what I mean? Right. That, I mean, that's super cool. You know, yeah, because most meet and greets could be you know well over a hundred dollars and. Two anywhere two to three hundred dollars and sometimes more thousand dollars. I mean, I know that some of the bigger artists charge, like I think Kiss is like twenty five hundred bucks or more, <laughs> yeah. just, to, just to get a, a five second photo with them. You know, what was it like touring overseas? You know, twenty you know twenty five years ago, twenty twenty five years back in the day. Did you have the same answer to that? Because everybody says like back in the day, I hear a lot of like we were hungover, we didn't get to see much. I mean, were you that way back in the day? I mean, did you like no. sightsee or did, were you just trying to nurse a hangover back in the day? You yeah. know, were you all young, you know? Yeah, definitely. I did a lot of sightseeing. You know, I wasn't the guy that was like the heavy alcoholic or the heavy, um, you know, drugs or all that stuff. I, really? I yeah, I wasn't that guy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had my moments. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, like I, I went on tour and it was just one big, long party of alcohol and you know debauchery it wasn't necessarily like that at all 
you know, I was more into experiencing different things and going out there and seeing different cathedrals and, you know, certain landmarks in certain countries. I was really into that stuff. And, but now that, now that I've done it like, you know, 20 times plus, (laughs) you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, I'll just, you're giving the tour guide by now. You're like, yeah, follow me. I'll tell you what's up. (laughs) Now I'm telling other people about the place. (laughs) It's like, now I just chill out. Now, now I look for, look for good, Food is what I look for. I look for good food. Oh, I love good food, man. Uh, how did you like, you know, when you, you're never into like alcohol and drugs, and, and how did you come down from a show, or how do you come down from a high? Because I always hear that's kind of like the thing, right? Like, you know, you play a show, and you, you're still got that that high feeling. I mean, how do you, I mean, what do you do to come down from that if you don't do, if you don't do drugs or alcohol? <laughs> you, you, you take, make it sound like, take a bath or something? Like, you make it sound like alcohol and drugs are the only thing that bring you down. No, <laughs> actually, the only thing that probably keep the party going. Yeah. You know? um, oh yeah, exactly. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. What what I usually do is I just, um, like I said, go go to the bus and chill out. You know, just chill, go, man. Go, that's go awesome. Hotel and chill out. But you know, that's after I've already talked to everybody, met everybody, signed everything. You know, taking photos for everybody. Then I can go and chill out. Do you ever get tired of, of signing everything and meeting everybody or, or you, you still feel like humble and just like, I'll, I'll wait till the last person. I'll wait till the last person. I mean, there's times where I was like exhausted, you know, traveling and then, you know, going up on stage and giving it your all and then going and signing. And there's like, you know, two or 300 kids there and you're like, Oh, you know, right. almost, almost like falling asleep. Like, Oh, cause you're just so tired. Yeah, man, but like it's so it's so it means so much to him. I mean, were you ever like, did you ever do that when you were younger? Did you ever wait outside a bus to meet you know your favorite bands? Um, no, I was kind of lucky that I worked in a a place here in Hollywood when I first came here when I was like seventeen years old. Um, I worked in a sandwich shop, and it was right across the street from the Hollywood Palladium, which is a very well known. Oh yeah concert place right and down the street from there is also a rehearsal studios and a recording studios so i met a lot of bands that would come in from the concert place or from the studios and bands would come in and order food and so i was one of the servers um and so i got to meet people that way who did you i've heard this before did you used to give a free sandwich to some musician (laughs) or something right yeah, this this is kind of a whole story. I've kind of said it up many times, but yeah. Um yeah. I Dave, love it though. Dave Mustaine was one of the guys that walked in and I was like, whoa. Like I knew who he was right away. I gave, <laughs> I gave him free food, free beer, and I pretty much picked his brain about, you know, what to do. Cause I wanted to obviously I was in Hollywood in Los Angeles to try to start a band, try to get my career going. And so Dave was one of the guys who gave me a lot of advice. You know, one of the one of the main advices that I still carry to this day was like uh, network, always network, mm. try to network. And that's exactly what I did way back. And then I was, in, you know, shortly after that, I was in local bands and then, boom, I was able to start Fear Factory and then take wow. off. From there. Networking was, is so important, man. That That's such a great answer or great advice. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of like what he told me. And then he actually invited me to one of the Megadeth shows and he took me backstage he introduced me to a couple of people, him and him and Dave Elfson. Mm, oh, that's so cool. And so that's kind of like how I got my start. It was kind of weird. And that's not weird, but I mean, it's cool. But uh, it was just, it's just, uh, you know, I, I still know him today. He's oh, do cool. you? You still talk to him or keep in touch uh, with him? Oh, yeah. Whenever I run into him, yeah, I talk to him. Um, what but, what yeah. year did you meet him in? I mean, what, what era was this? 1985. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. And it's funny because meeting him like probably a month later, I saw Metallica on Ride the Lightning, like right across the street at the Hollywood Palladium where I worked. Oh, wow. My work. And so, yeah. And so I went, I saw it was kind of weird just meeting Dave Mustaine and a month later seeing Metallica, you know? Yes. I mean, what did you think when you saw Metallica? Oh, they, they, were, they were amazing. Yeah. Was like, me... It was the first time I got to see him on Ride the Lightning. I didn't get to see him during Kill 'em All, uh, but I got to see him on Red Lightning. It was, it blew me away. I was like, this is exactly what I want to do, you know. 
Oh yeah, yeah. That that's that's awesome, man. I love like uh you know, it's interesting to me your first album you worked with Ross Robinson, right? I mean, you yes. you, you connected with him. And uh I <laughs> I was watching, by the way, I was watching Electric Hour with you and uh with Rob yeah. from uh, Machine Head. Yeah. And you guys played Scapegoat. Yeah. That, that was from your first record, right? And then we played Blind right after that. Blind right out. I thought that was so funny cuz I've always thought that like Scapegoat sounds like Blind. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny i don't want to say it because i seem to i people give me a lot of shit whenever i say it you know there's a lot of similarities there oh yeah exactly yeah, yeah. but um, when, when was that written though scapegoat i mean that was early 90s right that was what, we 90s? released it in 92 but we i wrote it in 1991 and you were you were working with ross robinson right well we worked, we worked with ross on a record in 1991 Okay, and but the record never came out because we couldn't agree on, uh, we we had a contractual disputes, so the record never came out. So we ended up using the record quality. We made it into a demo, and we basically shopped it around Los Angeles to all the different record companies, and a lot of different record companies. Like everybody turned us down. All the metal companies you could think of, they turned us down. But when Max Cavalera from you know, Sepultura at that time was Sepultura. Yeah. Uh, when he heard it, I played it for him because I met him at a, at a music convention and I played it for him and he was like freaked out. He's like, I got to tell the guys at Roadrunner about this. And I was like, Roadrunner already know about Fear Factory. They didn't want to sign us. And oh, he goes, okay. are you sure? Because this demo, this, this is a really good quality demo. I'm like, yeah. So he talked to Monty and Monty actually called me and said, hey, I already... Max says you got something new. I go, yeah, but you turned a band down. And then he goes, well, send it to me. I want to hear it. And he heard it. And he was like, holy shit. And he offered me, a, he offered us a contract like right there, like within a week. Really? Yeah. Will that, will this material ever be released or can people ever hear it? It was, it, it was released. Yes. It was released in 2002, I want to say. And it's, and it's called Concrete. Concrete, yes. I okay. I've seen this now. Yeah, I've seen it on Spotify. I've, I've got to check this out. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and so yeah, and that's uh, uh, Ross. You know, if it didn't, if he didn't record us, even though it didn't work out between us two, but if he didn't record us and give us a good quality sounding, you know, album or slash demo, whatever you want to call it, for me to shop to record companies, you know, we wouldn't have got signed. You know, and, and of course Max for telling. Yes. Monty Connor to give us a second chance. Oh, a hundred percent, man. That Max really, that's amazing. Amazing story. Yeah. I love, I love it that you, um, I know we keep going back and forth, but when you mentioned Max, I love it that you were playing with Max for a few Soulfly shows, right? Yes. We, I, I, I um, I was going through a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of illegal, illegal issues with fear factory, which is very well documented. And, mm -hmm. um, so I had a lot of time off while we were working out those legal issues. Um, so Max asked me if I wanted to come and uh, jam with him. I said, anything for you, Max. Hell yeah. You know, anything to to jam next to your brother and, and someone that you've, you know, loved their music over the years when you were growing up. Um, yeah. I was like, yeah, the fans loved it. Right. I mean, that's the minute, minute he asked me, I was like, hell yeah. When do we start? <laughs> right. And um, Yeah. And it just, uh, we toured a lot, man. We toured a lot. I did toured, you? Yeah, I toured them for a couple of years, and I also did Cavalera all Cavalera through South. Cavalera, yeah, yeah, all through South America, and we did um, we did Subatura Roots in its entirety. That is amazing. That album means so much to me. I love that album. That's amazing. Yeah, and so we did all that, and then uh, and then and then everything else uh, seemed to line up. Uh, all my legal issues were behind me. I was able to continue with Fear Factory. And that then, worked out perfect. Boom! Yeah, exactly. Were fans like just begging for a, a for you to do an album with them? Like Soul Flyer yeah. and Spirits, one of those albums, you know? Yeah, a lot of people were like, "You guys need to get you guys need to get some music going together." You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know, the minute that you know everything started to take off for Fear Factory again, I was like, uh, "I got to concentrate on this." You know, this is my baby. You got your baby. I got my baby. <laughs> right. Um. You know, after I got some. Uh, the manufacturer vinyl here. I was going to show you. Wait, is, it, is, it, is it? Yeah, that, that's that's the later one. That's the newest one. Yes, I don't. I don't know if 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 you're if you're making anything from this, but it's a beautiful album. I love this. 
so much. This yeah, album means the world. Wait, open it up. Does it have the? Uh, does it have? The, is it the threefold? Yeah. 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 Blue okay. vinyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those pictures are from Ozfest 1996. Yeah, so they even have it on here, right? You got a, a few songs from Ozfest '96 on the yeah, back. There's also a live recording from that too, as well. Yeah. Yes, that's amazing. You know. Yeah, I, and if you notice, we're playing like way faster than the record. Okay. <laughs> you gotta admit, you gotta, you know, you gotta admit, we were like in our mid twenties, and we were, you know, all hyped up and amped up to play the Ozfest. And um, yes, man, that must have been an honor to get asked to play. You know. Oh hell yeah! And then um. You know that kind of that kind of snowballed us into, you know, doing the Ozfest in night in in ninety six, and then we also toured with Ozzy, also in ninety six as well. We also toured with Iron Maiden in nineteen ninety six on that record. Yeah, that's uh, and you guys were in your early twenties right then, opening for Ozzy. Like I, well, th- this again, man. This I got to give you like credit where credit's due, man. It's like you're you are. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I'm not saying I do drugs or anything, but but I didn't say that, I didn't say I didn't drink. Okay, because I'm about to say like being towards Ozzy in your 20s, and that's got to be. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, that's a that's amazing. Yeah, it was a it was a pretty insane experience because when we first started with Ozzy, it was actually 95. It was before the Ozfest in 95. He did a tour called Retirement Sucks Tour, so he was coming out of retirement. And so <laughs> that was his first time coming out of retirement. Yes. Probably. <laughs> That's funny. And so we did uh we did a full US tour and a European tour. So oh wow. And in the US, you know, Fear Factory was just barely starting to take off. You know, D Manufacturer just came out. We were just starting to take off. And a lot of a lot of Aussie fans at that time didn't want to see us because we were coming out, we were young, we were hot, we were just fucking yeah. shredding. And next thing you know, we had beer thrown at us. We had we had coins. We we were so broke back then too that our <laughs> singer our singer would pick up change off the floor that people threw at us. Oh, we'd keep it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, hey man, I made three bucks tonight. <laughs> <And change. All right. laughs> and so yeah, I I would just we had these side drops, and I'm I'm just jamming, and in between songs, I can hear like. Wow, I wonder why. That's so right. Why do they do that? That's so wild, man. Just throw change. I have no idea. I have no idea. They they didn't want us up there. They wanted to see Ozzy. Yeah. So um. So I guess Ozzy probably didn't pay you a lot, but it's just the fact that you're opening for Ozzy. You're like, yes. Well, how can we say no to Ozzy? You know. Yeah. You know, we weren't. You know, like I said, we were just starting to take off. The manufacturer just came out and just it just started to take off. And then um, like I said, like I can hear coins whistling by my ear, hitting. I can see it hitting like the side drop behind me. So like, I can hear it go Doof! like it hits it. And I'm like, fuck. Did you ever get hit? I mean, were you ever hurt? Anybody, anybody get, you know, yeah, injured? I got hit here and there, but nothing in the face. Thank God. You know, cause that thing can hit your eye and you could be fucked. Yeah. Uh, a lot of beer, a lot of people chanting Ozzy, blah, blah, blah. We didn't care. We were just happy. We we're just like, okay, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. go there and do our thing. But by the time we hit Europe, like about a month and a half later, we hit Europe with Ozzy, and we're playing massive places with Ozzy. Fucking the crowd knew who we were already. They were like, "Oh wow!" To see us because that's when D Manufacture broke. You know what I mean? Yes. It started to take off in in uh, in Europe and the UK and places like that. It started to really take off. We had gold records in Europe from that record, and it just really opened the doors for us. Ozzy did on that uh, out there in Europe. I Was think. That- yeah. We, I, I think we probably just toured a little bit too early with Ozzy on, you know, because because the manufacturer came out in June and then by, you know, uh, August or September we were up, on tour with Ozzy in the states. Mm, I get you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Was um just a Europe, little too early, like a few months too early. Yeah, but how can you say no? I mean, that's it's like of a, course not, of course. Yeah, but, yeah. And it was the first time we it was the first time we had a bus and we're like, yeah, we got a bus. Oh yeah. 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 No. <laughs> um when in Europe, is there like an MTV Europe kind of version? I mean, where you guys played on MTV with, with D Manufacture? Yeah. yeah. Uh Headbangers Ball really took a liking to us, you know, worldwide in, in Europe, but not not in the States at all, really. We didn't really get that much uh MTV play in the States. As a matter of fact, 
we actually talked a lot of shit about MTV in the States. Oh, did you? Okay. Uh, on okay. stage, yeah. On stage, because they weren't really playing any metal, any, you know, it was before, it was before, like, Limp Bizkit and Corn broke. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah. 96, Carson 96. Daly and all that stuff, that was later on. Yeah, it was later on. So it was before all that stuff. So we were, we, you know, we would like, you know, be like, what the fuck? MTV doesn't want to play us. Blah, 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 fuck MTV. We had the whole crowd chanting, fuck MTV. <laughs> the only time that you saw some metal was on Headbangers Ball. That's but what I was going to ask. Yeah. They, they were kind of playing, you know, the, 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 the regular bands, Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, you know, Iron Maiden. They were playing the bands that were really big, but as far as like the new up and coming bands like us, they didn't give any attention to at that time. Mm. Of course, later on, it, later on, it opened up. You know, I think, I think uh, bands like Corn and Limp Bizkit and stuff like that definitely opened the doors for other bands like us to be played on MTV. A hundred percent. Hey, I got a, I had a, this my, my brain's gone blank. Tim Williams from uh, Vision of Disorder. He's on my show, and I had this prop made. But you guys are on Ozfest '97. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, we were still touring. Demanufacture and remanufacture the remix record. Yeah, we were, we were on that. Yeah, but Pantera was, typo negative. I mean, holy crap, man! Prime for uh, Power like, Man Five Thousand. Okay, now that was the tour, probably the most fucked up I've ever been on, as far as <laughs> right. yeah. only, only because of Pantera. Oh and, yes, okay. Pantera were the party. They were the fun guys. They were the ones that really made everybody, you know, take those shots those black tooth shots and it was like they had a party at their bus every night you know dime bag or or vinnie or somebody was out there cooking cooking steaks and pouring everybody shots and it was just a big party and you you just you know there's no denying that you know you had to you had to participate you know and so yeah what was your um i've always people probably ask this all the time um but what's your what's your uh, talk to me always? That Joshua to me asks this all the time. I think you're on the show too. But what is your 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 favorite memory from Dime and Vinny? I mean, do you have any kind of nights? I mean, there's probably a lot of blurry nights that stick out. <laughs> yeah, they were okay. It was it was one time where like you know uh, Dime asked Dime was Dino. He called he actually called me Dino. Dino, Dino, get over here. Dino, get over here. He goes drink this. I'm like. What is it? And I drank it. I'm like, oh, this is horrible. <laughs> My poops, blah, blah, blah. And he explained to me what was in it. And I'm like, I don't drink that, bro. I'm, I'm Mexican. I don't drink that shit. And he goes, <laughs> goes okay, what, do you, what do you drink, Donna? What do you drink? I'm like, I drink tequila. And he pulls out a wad of cash. And he goes, come here. And he tells this guy to come over here. Gives this guy money. And he goes, go bring fucking... Go bring Dino a fucking case of tequila. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so the guy went and bought a case of tequila. So he came back and he was like, "He's like, you, you got to match me in shots." I'm like, oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> so of course he's, pimp- he's pouring himself some shots. He's pouring me some tequila shots, and I had to drink it. I had to sit there and drink with him. You can't say no. <laughs> you, know you don't want to disappoint. Him. You just want to keep going with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> And that whole tour was pretty much like that. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And then, and then he goes, you're playing with me tonight. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, you're coming on stage and playing a song with us tonight. So the whole, almost the whole tour on that 97 Ozfest, I was on stage with him playing Walk every night. Oh, you did? Every night, huh? And it was like, and I was fucked up. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> on tequila, and I was like, oh my God. And so I, I played it as well as I could. <laughs> I don't remember really. I don't remember a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of amazing. video, a lot of video on YouTube where they're like, they are like, invite you on. They, they invited me on stage every night. There's a lot of YouTube videos, and then you see, um, you see, you know, uh, Phil and Selma pouring alcohol down my down. I had to open my mouth. He's pouring a full beer down my throat, and I'm like <laughs> trying to play yeah. walk at the same time. Did you ever make any of the home videos they did? I know they had a few of them. Oh. No, no, no. Their, their home videos were like were legendary. There was there was like before Jackass and all that stuff, you know. I know, yeah, man. They're like the original. Yeah. What do you think about the new Pantera um, touring? You know, with Zach. I'm not the new Pantera, but the you know the, the I don't know what you call it, Pantera 2.0, or but just you know Zach Wild and 
I think it's great, man. A lot of people want to see it. I, I yes, yeah, I absolutely. Of, I know a lot of people were against it. A lot of people talk shit about it. I know, but I, I I read all those comments. I read all that stuff. But if it was true, it definitely ain't slowing the band down. I mean, look at how many people want to see it. I, yeah, to- absolutely. And people that never got to see Pantera, now they're getting to see it, you know? And more power to them. I mean, they got the right guys doing the job, so it's killer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I have so many questions for you, man. I, I, obsolete came after indeed, man. In fact, I, that meant the world to me. And I'm and me and my buddies always saw you guys play at the masquerade and everything. And um, was there? I I assume there's a lot of pressure trying to follow up D Manufacture because that was such a massive album. Were you guys still like getting along in the studio doing Obsolete? Was that a yeah. was that a fun record to make? Yeah, definitely. Um. You know, I think that every band kind of goes through their ups and downs. And, of course, we've had a lot of our ups and downs, of course. Um, but after D Manufacture, we toured that record for three years straight. Wow. We, we needed a break, right? We needed a serious break. You know, our singer had taken off. Me and this – our bass player was, like, doing other stuff. And so me and the drummer just got together, and we just started writing the record. And – um because everybody needed a break, not everybody, but most two of the guys needed a break and they needed to do their other things. Um, it took us about a year to make the record. But it was like, if you notice by, that was, you know, done in 97, right? That record was recorded in 97. At that time, bands like Korn and other bands broke in America. In other words, they, they got, they, you know, that music started to get very popular and big and if you noticed there was a change there was a shift in production quality different types of production you know ross robinson the producer pretty much set the standard about how you know this new metal should sound right right and we were like we were like oh and 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 if you notice there was a lot of groove a lot of groove and a lot of you know uh hip-hop influence influence in the music um, that we just felt the wave, the current wave of music change. So we decided, okay, we're not going to do a, a, a demanufacture 2.0. We're going to do a fucking heavy, dark, dark, industrial, groovy, kind of more organic sounding record. We decided because that's where, you know, we, I always kept my ear to the ground and I always just felt, I don't know, you know, not a lot of people um, really follow, like a lot, not a lot of fans really realize how music changes. You know what I mean? You get to see the genres change mm-hmm. and everything grows and things become popular and things become not popular. Right. So at the time, what was popular was groovy, more groovier stuff. So we were like, okay, we'll, we'll bring the groove. We'll bring the groove, but we'll bring the fucking Fear Factory groove. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. Still all the double bass patterns, you know. Yeah. Shock. At that time, you know, people were doing groovy stuff, but nobody was doing groovy stuff like that. And but so, to be successful, though, you had to do your own thing. You, you weren't following, you know, whatever else was doing. Well, we, were, we, were following, we were following more of the production and the style of the production, you know, um, and just like I said, the 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 overall climate of music, of a Pantera was groovy as fuck. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And uh, you know, corn and stuff like that. All the stuff was groovy, and I was like, okay, we're gonna make our own type of groove record. And this is that's that's what Obsolete was, but it was it was more than that. Yes, you know, we actually we actually made a conscious decision to try to write some songs that didn't have double bass because we never. We never really wrote songs like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We had never in Fear Factory's career wrote a song without double bass. So, like, okay, let's do a song without double bass. So we did (laughs) Edge Crusher. Yeah. That's like... No double bass. Yeah. So we were like, like had to restrain ourselves from not putting double bass in a song. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do we do that? Oh, my God. We were like freaking out. How do we write a song? (laughs) You know what I mean? So we wrote Edge Crusher. And then yeah, we, man, your drummers, I mean, like, just the fact that they can play all the stuff that you guys write is phenomenal. 
Like it's like it's a drum know, machine or is it a human being? You know, if you listen, if you listen to D manufacturers, the whole record is double bass. You know, what I mean? yeah. So we was like, okay, let's do a few songs without double bass. So we did Resurrection, Descent, and Edge Crusher without double bass. So I made that conscious decision. Okay, let's challenge ourselves and not try to make anything that's too complicated, and but make it cool as hell and make it the style of Fear Factory, and that's exactly what we did. Was it what, what what were you into kind of the I hate to say new metal, but were you into like kind of like the biohazards and then it kind of went fear factory and deftones and corn? Were you into that kind of scene like the deftone and corn the early days? I mean, were you fans of that kind of music? Yeah, for sure. You know, we did you see them live back like you know before they were kind of famous? Well, we toured it was uh, there was a tour that we did in '96. Um, it was uh, Megadeth, Corn, Fear Factory, and Flotsam and Jetsam. Oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, on Flotsam and Jetsam. <laughs> that's literally, good. Literally on that tour, on the Megadeth tour, I literally uh, seen Corn pretty much break. In other words, they they went massive, and that mm. was still on the first record. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but were, you, were you a fan of like? I know I'm just being random right now, but I love Judgment Night soundtrack, and I think that's highly. Oh, yeah. Highly underrated, right? I mean, were you, were, were you, I'm, I, I, were you working on that album? Were you on that record? Because you should have been. Because it just seems like you guys were around the same time. No, we were not on that record, and uh, I don't know. We we never got asked to do that one, or there was another one that they did. Um, with the with with the vocalist who, Aaliyah, what's her name that died? Yes, yes, that was Dr Dracula or something like that. Into the damned. Okay. Yes, that's right. Yep. Yeah, I know. I know there was some bands on that. I think Corn was on that. I think I think Static X was on that. There was mm -hmm. a few bands that were on that. Yeah, we never got asked to do that one either. So we did. Well, why not though? That's that's insane to me. I don't know. I don't know. Soundtracks were big back then. You know, trying to get on soundtracks like that. Oh hell yeah! Um, we did. Uh, we did the Mortal Kombat soundtrack. That was during D Manufacture. That that was another thing too that really took us to the to the next level. Was was that that yeah. soundtrack? Oh, that's um, awesome! Yeah, we've been we were doing a lot of remixes. We were doing a lot of video game stuff, a shit ton of video game stuff. Don't ask me all the names of them, but we did. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I can't even tell you how many we've done. It's a bit. It's, it's it was a lot. Yeah, man, that that's great. I bet you that that that's that's awesome, man. Um, Our drummer at the time really hustled to get uh, that. Raymond, right? Yeah, Raymond really hustled to get that for the band, and he did. He did a great job, and it was really before a lot of bands were even, you know getting uh offers to do that so he was like he was really the guy that kind of opened the door for a lot of uh, maybe a lot of people don't know this but he definitely opened a door for a lot of artists to be featured in a lot of video game stuff that that, that sounds really interesting i wish they would do some kind of documentary about that you know like music and video games and how uh, it helps everybody out i kind of think we, we i kind of think we would probably get overlooked because at that time there was a lot of uh like a lot of skating videos were coming out, like Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk so there, was massive, yeah. So there was a lot of pop punk, pop punk bands, you know, that right. were that were featured in those stuff. But as far as metal, there wasn't really any metal stuff, and so we kind of broke the door for that. And also, we were actually uh, commissioned by some video game companies to actually write music for the video game. So we were writing fresh music for video games that um, that that was not on any record. Oh, that's awesome, man. Were you yeah. guys all kind of gamers in the band? I mean, would you guys play like these games on the road? Um, not as much as our drummer, but you know, for <laughs> yeah. I, I played some games here and there, but not really. I never wasted my time with that. Wrong word to say. I just never <laughs> felt just never connected it with a lot of people did. You know what I mean? Yeah, right on. Uh I love okay, I love Digi Mortal. How do you feel about this album? Because because some people love it, you know. Some I think it's underrated. Uh, um, I totally love it. I mean, a lot of people might be there. Might be some fans that maybe not liked it, but um, it still did really well. I mean, it is. That's my go to. I, I love that album. I mean, like I mean, selling wise, it still did really well. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but you know, Lynch it has it has one of our biggest songs on there, which is Lynchpin. I think it's like number one on Spotify. Yeah, yeah, number one on Spotify. Yeah, millions and millions of views. I mean, listens. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, there there are some stuff that we might have made some mistakes on, but you know, for the most part, it's still a kick ass record. Um, you know, it's like for some reason, like that album and Machine Heads, uh, uh, Crashing Around You, that album, I can't think of the name, but Supercharger, that people hate on that album too, and I like it. I don't know, that, that was such a weird time, you know, that early 2000s. It's like everything was kind of changing a little, you know. Yeah, Rob was telling me that one of the songs on that record still, like, people request it all the time, and then when they play it, people go nuts for it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. What song is that? I can't, I can't remember. Oh yeah, yep. But, yeah, I still I love that album. Uh, uh, and I love how Jamie Josta. You're on Jamie Josta, and he was singing uh, "No One." He loves that song. No one. I love that song yeah. too, man. Yeah, that's like a deep cut. You know, we hardly ever play that song. I, 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 I we might we might have played it like when it came out and back yeah. in 2000. It's a killer song though. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, we haven't played it much. What about um the Cypress Hill song? Like I know um. Uh, Burton didn't like, or maybe it may not his favorite song, but the uh, backup or whatever. But, uh, uh, backup, backup. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it wasn't that it was a bad song, I just felt that it didn't belong on the record. Mm. The record company felt that it should have been on the record because they thought that it was going to help break the band. But I was already telling the record company, like, look, by the time this record comes out, new metal, I think, was going to be was on the down, was it was crashing down a little bit. And yes. I was like, we don't need to follow that trend. And I was like, we just need to get away from that. Um, it's still a killer song. I just thought maybe it should have been as a B-side. Because there's, there's actually some B-sides that are pretty ripping that should have been on the album. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when you mentioned B-sides, I have a buddy, uh, Julio, that, that loves you guys. He's one of my, my buddies. And he had told me you guys had more cover songs than I thought of. Like, I thought, you know... You had a couple of them, but you know he was wanting me to ask you this. He, he I think he, he mentioned four cover songs: the Cars, Gary Newman, oh. Dog Day Sunrise, yep. uh, Millennium, and yep. uh, where the evil dwells. Where evil dwells. Yeah. Yep. Which one's your uh, favorite one? Do you have a favorite one of, of all the covers? You're missing another one. You're missing another one. Oh, so there's one more. Okay. There is a. a, a uh, it's called Your Mistake. It's Agnostic Front, and it's only on the special packaging of D Manufacture. I did not know that. Okay, noted. Yeah, is that your favorite one? No, it's not, I, I didn't say it was your favorite <laughs> one. I'm just saying you missed one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, my bad, man. That that's cool. I didn't and know you guys funny. did that many covers. That's cool. It's funny that he he recognized where Evil dwells because that's that's like an odd cover. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, from a band called Fetus, and he had a side band called, what was it called? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember the other band he has, but it was a Jim Thorwell, I think his name is, and he had a another side band, and he did that song, and it was like, wow, we needed to. It was it was a killer song, so I wanted to cover it, and we did. I think we did a great job. Have you ever played the covers back to back of any song of any band? Uh no no I mean yeah yeah I mean like I I don't know <laughs> maybe not I mean the the car song I, I, everyone's heard that one back to back. Has anybody, anybody ever told you you look like George Michael? <laughs> yes, I've had that. I've had I've had George Michael. I've had Will Ferrell. And Will, yeah, that's about see, it. I don't yeah. see the Will Ferrell. Hey, thank you, man. Yeah, it's because the chat from uh from Red Chili Peppers gets him a lot too. But I've yes, had I've, he definitely I've, really looks like him. Yeah, I've had uh, a George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one that said that. That's cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you get girls hitting on you because of it? A hundred percent. Really? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Maybe you need to get a George Michael cut out. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, man, that would be cool. <laughs> you know what's funny about George Michael is uh, uh Chino from Crosses uh covered um uh, one of Wham's songs one more time. Man, really? It's a great song, man. That's kind of funny that you brought up Wham up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not sure if I know, I'm not sure if I know the song or not. Yeah, I'll have to send it to you. <laughs> Speaking of Chino, that would be amazing if you guys did a, a Deftones and Fear Factory. I mean, that would that would be that would rule. I'm not sure if uh, they do any covers. I mean, do any uh, songs with other metal bands. I'm not sure. If, I don't think they're really into that. Yeah. Hey, I got some. Uh, I know they did one. I know they did one with Soulfly way back. 
Oh, head up. Oh, yeah, you know, no, yeah, head up. I think it was head up. Yeah, yeah. That was that was crazy times, man. I, got might some... be, I think that might be one of the fewest or one of the only times they might have linked up with a metal band and done. And it's so crazy that Max uh, announced the name Soulfly Live. You know, like he was. He's like, we're gonna name it Soulfly from the song or whatever. I, th I thought that yeah. was classic stuff. I I love YouTube because we can watch all that now. You know. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's how a lot of the new generation of kids, you know, get into it. They might have heard something from their parents, from their dad or whoever. You know, they might have heard something about Pantera or Slayer. And then, boom, they go back and just type it in and they find it all right there. They're like, whoa, you know. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> you know, you threw me off of the George Michael thing. And now I'm, I'm remembering <laughs> now. Do, you know, Doc Coyle from uh, Bad Wolves? Yeah. I had him on the show and uh, he was actually here and he signed something for me and he put, um, I can't remember what it said. Something like Scott Bowling equals number one hair or something or best hair or something like he, that was his autograph was um, my hair on the album. You know, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> like It's like, it's like Conan O'Brien hair. Oh yeah. Conan O'Brien. That's good, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey man i'll fun. take it man i feel bad for people that are losing their hair so i'm just like i'll just take the, the hair you know roll it oh your carrot top no, i've never gotten that carrot top is completely ripped now so yeah, yeah. I mean, just like he is like he looks like arnold schwarzenegger kind of <laughs> it seems like we're going off subject here no i'm sorry man yeah yeah, yeah. i can add this out if we want but hey um i got some cool skate decks oh uh, shit how'd you, how'd you get that have you never seen this this is from um uh, i interviewed the we sell them. Oh, you sell them? Yeah, yeah. I got them. I, what? My brain has gone blank now. Um, Do you have a vol volatile skates? Yes, volatile skates with um the the guy. I can't think of his name right now, but I'll I'll uh I'll think oh, of it in a minute. You are talking about um, Tom? Yes, yes. I've had him on the show, but we got two of them. Oh, Tom, Hay Tom okay. Hazard. I'm sorry, Tom Hazard. Tom I remember now. now where are you going to put it? You got no room. I'm looking at your walls over there. Uh, I had to take this off the wall just to uh, just to show you. <laughs> oh, dude, your whole thing is just full of memorabilia on your wall. Oh, I got it everywhere, man. It it's uh, I got the whole basement full of stuff. Do you have a motion sensor on your camera because it it follows you everywhere you move. It does, yeah. Yeah, so it's so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at you all high tech and shit. Oh man, I'm trying, man. Like it's it's definitely not. I'm doing some in in uh, person interviews in January, so I'd love to have you on the show sometime, and you know, at the house sometime, kick it. I mean, we got it's super professional. We got cameras everywhere, and uh, it's fun. So it looks like there's a bedroom over there with a bunch of stuff over there too. So the bedroom is a a guest room that's all movie posters and stuff. So it's kind of ah, like the okay. I haven't got like original blockbuster. Have so, you interviewed any uh, any uh, actors? I've had so the closest I've had is um Tom Farley, uh who's Chris Farley's brother. Yeah. So he was here. So that was really cool. Wow. Is I don't Tom think Farley, any other actors though. Is he an actor? is he an actor? What's that? Is Tom Farley an actor? No, he's not an actor, but he uh he wrote a book. It was like a New York bestseller book and he travels a lot and does a lot of public speaking events. So the Closest you had to an actor is having an actor's brother. Oh no, I'm sorry. I complete. I haven't. I I did have an actor. C. Thomas Howell was on here. Oh, okay. Oh, he's fuck. He's from great. Outsiders. Yeah. Yeah. He he was yeah. here. I have a buddy that uh. In your he's play, a, he's a singer songwriter now. So I, I'm a singer songwriter. I'm sorry. He's a he's a country kind of guy. That, and I have a buddy that writes for him. Writes uh, music for him. So he's actually here. We we got to interview him. It was fun. That's cool. But um, hey man, this is um, I love talking to you. I I grew up watching you. I've never been like more nervous to interview, and like it's uh, I have notes and stuff. I was like, God, it's Dino, man. Like, I mean, it's like you decades you've been all, in my life. Say that to all the musicians. Yeah. No, no. I don't. <laughs> say it to all the musicians. Yeah, yeah. No, man. I really did though, man. I, I mean, if you could see my notes, I just have a pile of notes here, man. But um, but it's it's <laughs> all right. Let's 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 get to your notes. Okay, man. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I, well, I got, we already ask did Ozfest '96. Ask me the weird, odd questions, whatever you want to ask. Okay. Let me get to it here. Uh, oh, you know what? We never even covered your new singer, man, Milo. So you, uh, how many people did you try out before you found your singer? Well, 
it's it's a lot. It was a lot. I mean, we got a shit ton of emails, and it was like, it didn't stop. As a matter of fact, I still get stuff. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> Till this day. Yeah. Hey, hey if Milo uh, doesn't work out. Check out. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, I do get that. <laughs> Not just that, but drummers and bass and all kinds of stuff. Right. Hey, you want another guitar player? Hey, if you if you ever decide not to do it, I can do it for you. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you're talking about me. You know, you're like, yeah, you're like trying to replace yourself. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, it took a while. You know, I took my time because I, you know, I wanted to make sure I got the right guy, and I did. You did, yes. A lot of people think that because I said I was looking for a new singer like two years prior. That 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 that's when I got a new singer. No, I it took me two years to find the right guy. You know, so, and originally I I remember hearing you in interviews. You were gonna get a you're trying to like maybe get a female. Like you didn't say you were, but you're like it could be a female, it could be a male. Yeah, it could. I was open to anything. I was. Open Did you to ever anything. try out any females? Yes. To, for, yeah. yeah. But uh, you, know, you also got to remember it was during COVID too, mm -hmm. so a lot of people couldn't even get here. They couldn't even get to. LA from their countries or even in the States, you know, flights were halted, and, you know, very limited flights were going. And so a lot of people couldn't physically interview. So that, I think that's the reason why I had such an influx of emails, uh, a, a video, everybody sending videos in and stuff like that. And so there was, there was actually some funny videos as well. There was, <laughs> you know, a guy farting in the microphone. Boom, and said, hey, I'm your new singer. There you go. You know, it's like, um, there was one guy who was like singing out of a boom box playing one of the songs and he's singing. And then one of his, his cat, you can see his cat in the background is walking <laughs> on the boom box and steps on whatever it is. And it turns it off. <laughs> he's like, hey, hey. like shooing the cat away. And he's like, starts it again and starts playing. Singing, you know, that stuff's price priceless, you know. You should have documented this, maybe, you know, like maybe film I mean, the process. I would have to get, I would have to get release forms from everybody if I put it out. Oh, yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> it was privately yeah. sent to me, so it was stuff like that. This reminds me of uh, some kind of monster, the Metallica, when they were trying to get a a new bass player, and they had Robert Trujillo trying out, and they had all these different people. Yeah. Have Have yeah. you ever thought about doing like a Fear Factory documentary or something like that? Somebody maybe not with like that with therapists, but you know, just a normal, normal fear factory doctor. Someone, someone approached me about doing one, um, and I'm 100 percent into it. But I just think there's a lot of personal things that people don't want to come out that need to be said in order for you to understand the whole picture. But you know, some people don't want that coming out, so I think it would be kind of impossible to do it. So, so other people in the band couldn't just tell their own story and you just add it to the documentary they just some people just don't even want to talk about well I, silent. yeah i think that if, if if some of the interviews were to take place they might not want to say the whole story mm. you know what i mean which the whole story would be is the important you know yeah well maybe you could tell could you tell the whole story just from your side and just have it I can, one side I can, tell, I can tell you off record yeah I, 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 yeah i want to hear that <laughs> It's some it's some pretty crazy stuff. I mean, it's not stuff that's not unheard of. It's just, you know, it's it's kind of crazy stuff to hear all these typical things that happen. To I work. think it's interesting that you you guys uh, released an album uh, with Burton after he left or something like you'd found out you found out he was <laughs> gone, but you and you still released the album, which I actually love that album though. It's good. Yeah, well, the record company had well, you know, in, in so many words. The record company already paid for it. So they wanted oh, the record. Okay. Company yeah. Wanted. They already, he already had completed his vocals. Everything was already done. So yeah. So the record was, was already scheduled to come out when he quit. And so like, yeah, I could have said, you know, screw the record company. I'm going to take these tracks and put a different singer on it. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, he quit the band. He left, he left the 30 something year legacy behind. And this is kind of like a swan song, his way, his last record before he he left. So, yeah. What do you think about? Um, are you guys writing for Milo right now? I mean, or is, are you guys yes. doing a new album with him? Yes, his name's they, they call him his name is Milo. Milo, Milo or Milo? Yeah, I always get yeah. yeah. It's funny. I heard Rob say the same thing as Milo, Milo. That I got confused. So I was like, I don't know which one. But well, it's Milo. Maybe it's Milo. It's like Dino Milo. Dino Milo. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like how you say it. But there are people who say Dino. 
<laughs> yeah, really. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, you know, like especially when you go to Starbucks and you got to put your name. They put your name on the side of the cup. <laughs> yeah, they go, yeah. no, no, coffee for Dino. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> I go, it's Dino. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, yeah, it'd be really cool seeing like a new album with you guys, a new singer, and I mean, I don't know. It yeah, sounds we, pretty exciting. We, we've been working on stuff, but the problem is, is that we keep getting offered tours. Oh, okay. Like, I'm not going to turn them down. I was like, we need to get back out there. We need to kind of like show face. And so, you know, I, I miss being on the road. We had, you know, um, we had such that big lockdown, you know, for a couple of years there with COVID and then getting back there, out there with Soulfly, you know, I was itching to get back out there with Fear Factory. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, exactly. What'd you do during lockdown? I mean, like, how do you survive from just um, stopping everything? Movies. Movies, yeah. A lot of movies. Did you? Yeah. Roll a lot of music, watch a lot of movies. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of fun. <laughs> it, it, kind of, it, kind of, it kind of was. I mean, I kind of actually liked, uh, I don't like the idea of of why we had to have a lockdown, but I kind of like the fact that of having to rest, chill, chill out at home for a year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Eat uh, Mexican food, cervezas. <laughs> 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 that's my favorite food by the way man i've heard you mention that before but that, that's like my favorite well mexican <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> yeah. It's like i'd love to be on tour with you guys amigo's, amigo's straight from italy it's like hey what's your favorite food and he goes hamburgers no i'm not gonna say that he's gonna say italian food he's italian <laughs> okay so he's italian but he said hamburgers that's <laughs> no no he didn't i'm just saying yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he's gotcha. not going to say hamburgers he's gonna say mexican food yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's funny man that, well man i'm really looking forward to seeing you guys on this tour with and i gotta check out lacuna coil man like I, i'm i'm just i missed the boat on that so i'm definitely gonna check them out for sure Come out. people might ask you for an autograph yeah okay yeah right like oh my god george michael fucking came back I now will sign it, George. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it was all a hoax, man. I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, you. <laughs> you know. I'll take that, man. I'll wear a Wham shirt to your show, man. You know. <laughs> there you go. Do it, man. Do it. Do it. I love this, man. That's so funny. We man. do have some big tour announcements coming up uh, soon. Okay, for, for, for next, next year. year. Yes. When, when's that going to come out? Soon. I can't tell you exactly what day. Yeah, but it's, uh, that's but, cool. But, in the, but within the coming days. Are you guys going to – Um, I, I can't wait to hear this, but are, are you guys going to celebrate any more anniversaries? Like, well, I know Absolute is like 25 maybe years old. and We, sell the anniversary, coming up. we, we celebrate the anniversary every year. It's like a birthday for the, for yeah. the record. You know what I mean? Um, True. Are you talking about maybe like doing like, like some kind of special like a uh, vinyl release or kind of box set maybe? What about a tour? A tour would be amazing from start to finish kind of thing. Yeah, the next one we would do, which I mentioned before, would be obsolete. Oh my god, man! For every song, that'd be amazing. I ideally, I would like to do it like later next year, but we'll see what happens. I, I'm not gonna. Don't hold me to that, but but it will happen. But just don't help. Don't hold me on to the time that it is going to happen. Because, but I do want it to happen. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. I, <laughs> I feel like I'm fanning out. Just that. That's that's great. I can't wait. Hey, you should get the uh, the. I just remember like when you guys played on that tour. There was always the police shirt that Burton wore. The police didn't he have like security. a shirt? Security. security. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. We should just bring all that back, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> make Milo wear the security shirt. Yeah, security. <laughs> I'll tell him that. People people already say he, he looks like a clone of Bert. He does, man. But and he sounds amazing live too. I mean, yeah. that's that yeah, that's yeah. yeah, I know yeah. you I know you mentioned you guys rehearsed pretty hard uh before, you know, you kind of let him off to the world or you know <laughs> let the world hear him, I right. guess. Before I introduce them to the world, introduce so them to the world. Yeah, yeah. You can chew them up and spit them out. No, um, yeah, we definitely, I definitely had to get him prepared for a few things. You know, I got him prepared for a lot of the internet backlash because he's never really experienced that stuff. And the funny thing is that he hardly gets any at all. Exactly. I was going to say that I never re hear anything bad. You know, it's it's all pretty positive. Yeah, very positive. It's it's great. Um, 
In He's, fact, I hear everybody tell every, I've, all the comments I've read have all been like, he sounds amazing live. That Fear Factor, he's always sound good on albums, the the vocals, but live, he actually sounds really good live. You know, I don't mean to compare, but I'm just telling you what I read. You know, it's been yeah, very positive. Yeah, it's, it's been extremely positive, and um, you know, everybody. The only negative thing we get is like, okay, he he sings great live, but what about the record? You know, what's he gonna do when we make a record? Is he yeah. gonna do? He's gonna be able to handle that? I'm like, I don't want. To, don't want to. Don't worry. <laughs> right. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't worry. It's coming. That's don't hilarious. Worry. Like it's gonna sound awful on album. You know, he sounds amazing <laughs> live. Yeah. Especially with the technology we have today. Come on. <laughs> yeah, true. I'll, I'll have an AI vocalist. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys ever do another cover song or, or is for uh Yeah, we're gonna do George Michael and we're gonna have you on. Yes, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'll just be on the album cover, man. That'll be, that'll be <laughs> yeah, that, that, you just just your face on the album cover with that smile and those teeth. Yes. Hey, can I at least be on one of your guitar picks? You know, when you throw out, it just be me and the teeth, and they'll say Fear Factory on the the the, the pick. You, okay, okay, you're going too far now. You're going too far. <laughs> oh, that's we'll, hilarious. Put you on a shirt. We'll put you on a shirt. Yeah. Well, too, too far. The shirt's way better than the pick. I'll, I'll take the shirt. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll put it in Spanish. Jorge Michael, or whatever. Yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, one last question, man. You're um. I remember you being like on on Roadrunner for your Spanish band, and I'm trying to remember the name. Maria. Yes. So I was watching Ozark, which they filmed it near my house, mm -hmm. and they played a song in the show. Man, two, two. Yeah. Then the guy's being tortured <laughs> playing your music over him. You know. <laughs> yeah, he got he got cat uh, captured. He got kidnapped by the Mexican cartel, and they threw him into like. <laughs> yeah, this, dude. This their their little dungeon whatever and they just cranked brujeria really loud when they played that i was like yes that sounds awesome you know like that's that's so funny that yeah. that was the torture music you know I, I i posted it on facebook but then facebook took it down i don't know why, why. is that I don't oh know, because i wasn't allowed to show something from ozark but it wasn't because of our music it might have been something because of the show i don't know but at the time this is like what two years ago Something like that. Yeah. How did you find out you're that you're gonna be on the show? Like the, the music. The check. That must be a nice check because that's a that's a <laughs> huge show. Um, well, they obviously contact the record company and then you obviously you get paid from it and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I knew about it. That's amazing, dude. But they had yeah. filmed it like they had filmed it like you know a year before it came out. That's why I knew about it. Like so, they they they're like, we'll give you a check. We're just gonna play your music, and it's actually torture. Oh, you <laughs> check for it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that that that's that's great, man. I I love that. I don't know, if not many people know that, you know, but maybe yeah, there was a lot of people who noticed it right away, and they were like, wow, you know, that was really cool. It was great exposure for the band and stuff like that. I'm actually not actually doing it anymore because I'm doing Fear Factory and I'm concentrating on that stuff right now. And they're they got the, they got the, uh, the other thing going on right now. So yeah, I remember yeah. when you guys released some early stuff. When when there's pretty vulgar album covers and stuff. Well, Brujeria, I was in. I was doing Brujeria. I started Brujeria uh, before I started Fear Factory, like like about a year before. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, that's uh, when you got advice from Dave Mustaine, like around that time, right? Was that? No, 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 no. Dave was saying was a few before that. Oh, before that. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, I I did network, and you know how I networked? I just went to I just went to concerts and I said, hey, I'm having a party at my house afterwards. Why don't you come over? And so people started coming over, and then next thing you know, musicians started coming over, and then next thing you know, I started meeting a lot of musicians, and then our apartment, wherever we're, wherever I was at, wherever I lived. We had parties that we had, you know. I've had James Hetfield that's one of, at one of my parties. I've had Jim Martin from Faith No More. I've oh, that's one of my favorite bands. Yeah, it's Billy amazing. Gould, Faith No More, uh, Shannon Hoon. You know, so oh god, you know, had Shannon Hoon at your house. Yep, was really good, really good mates with them at the time. And then, you know, a, a lot of people like that, and that's how I networked, and that's pretty much how I met other musicians. You know, yeah, seriously, like if you could write a book, I mean, this is this is. I would love just hearing all these stories. 
I'm only dropping names for the story. I'm not trying to like brag. That's but it was no, it, no, not bragging. But if you could just have like each chapter be about a different person you met or something, I mean that'd be amazing. Really cool, it was a really cool period in our time, in my time, and uh, you know, like again, like you know, like I got pictures of all this stuff too. I got like, uh, you know, uh, Tom Maria from Slayer was at our house a lot. Wow. Yeah, a few a few parties and then. Just very various, you know, every, all everybody from Napalm Death, Carcass, Subletour, Paradise Lost. I can just go on and on and on. Yeah. That, it's been to our place. Biohazard, sick of it all. Oh, you know? God. Yeah. And so I had these legendary parties and then, you know, uh, but then all of a sudden I, I, you know, the band started to take off and I didn't get to have the parties anymore. And my, But, you know, the funny thing is, is I wasn't really drinking at mm -hmm. these parties that I was having. Yeah. Yeah. But... I drink a little bit, but nothing really major. You know what I mean? Yeah. What was wrong with it? I was just... actually more the I was actually more the DJ. I was DJing. Oh, were you? That's cool too. Yeah. I played everything but metal. Okay. <laughs> did you did you play like George Michael stuff? <laughs> I don't think I ever played George Michael. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. Yeah. No, that that's amazing, dude. I love, I love these there's stories. A, but there's a there's a legendary uh VHS tape that was going around. This is this is like a off the wall story. Okay. I used to work at a record store in Hollywood Boulevard and there was a guy that would come in and sell bootleg VHS tapes. Right. Mm. And we're talking like, you know, we're talking like early, early, I'm sorry, mid to late eighties. Right. It was about 87, 88. So he would come in and we bring in his VHS tapes. The VH tip VHS tapes would have like bootleg concerts on it. You know, somebody would sneak in a camera back then and videotape yeah. a con concert and then put it on a VHS tape, make copies of it, and they would sell it. And so we would buy them at our record store, you know, cheap, a few oh, dollars. Oh, I've, I've done, I bought those before too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so people would come in and buy them because they want to see like Red Hot Chili Peppers live, you know, and Sepultura live, uh, you know, Metallica live, opening up for Ozzy, you know, just all different kinds of VHSs that we would buy and people would buy them all the time. So then one day the guy comes in and he brings in porno, like bootleg porno of 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 like stuff that we've never seen before. Like, I don't know if you know that Sylvester Stallone did a porno. Did you know that? I heard that. Yes, I heard that yeah. before before Rocky. <laughs> That's funny. I think Doc Cole told me that or somebody told me that. Yeah. Yeah. Goo Dolls did a porno. Really? So, so yeah. you guys have the celebrity. <laughs> but we were having celebrity, celebrity porn tapes. <laughs> VHSs, right? I didn't know Google Doll guys. Did. That's that's. And funny. at one time he brought in this tape, its own tape, and if you you can understand what I'm trying to get at, right, right, right. It was the most grossest tape ever. Right? It was just absolutely <laughs> gross. You guys watched this at a party? Just you well, just watching this? I I know. I I took it from the store. I took it from this guy. Gave him a few bucks, and I took it home. And I played it for everybody. Everybody's like, oh, you know. Right? <laughs> so I go, I said, hey, when we have these parties and we want to get people out of the house, we got to throw this VHS tape in. <laughs> oh, God, that's amazing. Yeah. So we would put this tape on to get the brown tape. Out. We put the brown <laughs> tape in, right? To get people out. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because some, I was talking to somebody recently. <laughs> they were telling me about this tape. I'm like, dude, I had that shit back in 88. I was the one who got it from the guy who had it, who was selling it at the record store, and I bought it. <laughs> Anyways, I turned on, I turned uh, Mike Patton from Faith and More, turned him on to the brown tape. He was way into it. Was he? Yeah, he, he did a song called Cuckoo for Kaka. I know, I love that song. It's King for a Day. Is that, That's about the, <coughs> no, that's about no, that. No, huh? It's on Angel Dust. Angel Dust, you're right, I'm sorry. So I love that did, song. Turn him on to all this stuff, and then. That uh, song, wait, that song's about the brown tape? No, it was inspired by inspired. Stuff. Okay, because yeah. I gotta go, so anyways, go. We all have to go back and re-listen to that, you know. So, anyway, so the brown tape, I put it on at parties to get people out of the house, right? So, we're talking like three, four in the morning. So people are finally people would leave, like, oh, this is gross. Oh, how can you put this on? I'm out of here, you know. They, right? <laughs> they would leave and get them out of the house. You know what I mean? And then we started doing it regularly, and people started to stay. Oh yeah, we know the brown tape. <laughs> It started to circulate. Like we started, other people wanted copies of it. It just kind of circulated. <laughs> Somebody was just telling me about it just the other day. Oh yeah, I saw the brown. Did you ever hear about the brown tape? I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> the, the so a modern day version of the brown tape. I'm I'm assuming it would be like two 
two chicks in a cup or cut the I don't know if you've seen that before, but, yeah, but that was like moose. That was like chocolate moose. That wasn't real poop. Come on. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, I didn't know. Okay. <laughs> I, I fell oh, for the round it. Tape, the round tape was was exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> I love it, man. I love like when I was a kid, it was always we watched Phases of Death. That was the big VHS yeah. tape. Phases, Phases of Death was cool. That was like regular, like you know, that was regular. That was regular. That wasn't brown. Yeah, tape, that wasn't. Like, <laughs> brown tape was just, you know, people didn't want to see that. <laughs> uh, speaking of old times, man, did you ever do the tape trader stuff? Like, uh, like, did you trade tapes with other people, or is that a thing that you're into? Um. Yeah. Well, way, way, way back. Yeah, when I was like, you know, yeah. eighty. 85 yeah definitely but um but a, a friend of mine was really into it so i didn't really have to do it as much because he had all these pin pals and he was trading all trading all these cassettes and you know we were listening to the early death demos and possessed and you know we had the no life to leather demo from motley from uh, oh, you, yeah you had that that's cool metallica and just all those kinds of cassettes yeah so i i, I definitely he's the one who got most of it so yeah yeah, I miss that. That's that's really cool. Yeah. Well, you got anything else, man? This has been so fun, dude. Like, I, I want to part well, two think, or I the house. Think, I think we might need to end on the brown tape. I think we're going to end on the brown tape. I'm just going to cut the tape traders thing. We're just going to end think, on the brown tape. I you know? think the title of this podcast should be called The Brown Tape. Okay, I, I will do that. I'll be uh, Dino, <laughs> Fear Factory, Brown Tape. Dino, or, or Brown Tape. Fear Factory. Maybe we could put that before Fear Factory. <laughs> Remember, this is like 1988, so just you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think <laughs> I think if we mention the brown tape, there might be a handful of people that know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, well I'll put that in the title, and the brown tape is definitely <laughs> going on there. <laughs> Side note underneath will be Wham, and you know, brown there you tape. Go. yeah, yeah. George Michael Wham. Dude, this has been so fun, man. Seriously, I've had a blast. Well, we're gonna see you in Atlanta, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to hang out with uh, uh, Diego and Christian, and all of them, and and Aru. I, I love all those guys. I I, I met them all. I had them on the show. Cool. All but, right. uh, yeah, I'd love to see you, man. Love to see you at the show, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll definitely catch up. Let's definitely do it, Dino. Man, I appreciate it, man. This is so cool, man. I had a blast. Thank Brown tape. That's good. <laughs> Thank episode. you for having me on. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. I really appreciate it, Dino. This means the world, man. All right. Thank you. All right, I just want to, say, want to what? say thank you for the support and all the fans out there who've given us a lot of support uh, over the years. You know, we were coming up on 32 years of Fear Factory on October 31st, and that's going to be our, our, our 32nd anniversary. So that's, that's a long time. So that is a long time, man. Congratulations on that long run. You know, a lot of bands fade or out and go away. I didn't even be 33. 33. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. 33 years. That's a long time. It is, man. A lot of bands stop and a lot of bands quit, and you just guys keep you keep going, man. You you keep doing the machine keeps going. It's it's in my blood. It's still it's still there. I, I can't get rid of it. Amen to that. <laughs> well, let's end with that, brother. I, I really appreciate being on the show, brother. Just keep in thank touch. You, I'll see you at the Atlanta show. All right, brother. Talk to you later, care, man. And thank Bye. you so much, man. No problem. Right, later, bro. Later.